Man, train prices are just so expensive nowadays. I mean, look at this. The Acela is cheaper than the Northeast Regional. Something has to be causing this sharp increase of train prices. Google, look up train inflation. What the? and welcome to the fourth Pensy Fan 19 Q&A special. Now this one is going to be a little bit different offhand because instead of writing a 10 to 15 page long script and take up a lot of room in the C drive, I'm going to do this entire Q&A unscripted, which means there won't be any legible subtitles in the bottom. There may be some mistakes with the auto-generated subtitles. That's besides the point, basically, I'll try to answer these questions off the top of my head after seeing them for the first or second time and cut out any audio errors where necessary as well as add in some other sound effects. For example, our first question asks Do you know the way? To which I say Yes! I do. So, with that out of the way, let's move on to the next questions. Which trains would you recommend to buy? Unfortunately, I don't really have any experience with any train simulators per se. The only one I did have was Train Sim World when it was for free on Epic Games, but that eventually took up way too much room in the C drive. I wasn't really using it that often because school came around, so I unfortunately had to delete it. I'm sorry everyone, I know it was the only train sim I had. I'll try and see if I can get it back later on, but I'm really not sure when, so to answer your question, I would recommend a train simulator that has the train in it. Favorite moment in railroading history? I would probably say the 1939 World's Fair since that was in New York City, which is a city that I visit a lot. It had some of the most diverse power or diverse equipment within the entire United States, as well as some international units. And other events at the World's Fair in general just captured the entire essence of the late 30s, early 40s, and the Art Deco movement as well as when a lot of the streamliners started to come around. First time you've ever seen a train. Now I'm not really sure because I don't remember too much, but I do know that trains have been a part of my life for as long as I can remember ever since my first Christmas. So I guess the first time I've ever seen a train would probably be just that, my first ever Christmas. It was some sort of battery powered G-scale set going around the Christmas tree. Best video you've made, not by popularity. In terms of favorite, well, first of all, there have been, um, I have a few favorites on each category, so I have a favorite episode for Remarkable Engines, I have a favorite periodical, but one of the best videos I can think of offhand, or at least within the year, since I already answered ELS 600 for Remarkable Engines in the last Q&A, I would say for the year 2022 would probably be fixing your branch line. That's a brand new series that I'm definitely enjoying working on because... It has a little bit of a casual tone to it. I'm going over a lot of different branch lines and analyzing where they can improve, adding a little bit of humor where necessary. So yeah, I would definitely say my um, the video I'm most proud of, at least for the year 2022, would be fixing your branch line, specifically for West Hampton since that started the whole series. Why do you like Doodlebugs? Basically, they represent a um, a very simple lifestyle. It's Half motor car, half coach, and it's serving a relatively small branch line. But still, it's connecting that branch line, however infrequent it may be, to a larger main line or branch line of a larger railroad, so this way every little town is connected to a railroad in some way. That's the kind of rail service that I propose or suggest for the US, where every single town has some sort of connection, so this way there's less of a reliance on the car or a bus. What is your opinion on 3985, 5511, and other equipment being restored? Yes! What's your favorite subway car? I would probably have to go with either the R36 or the Lovies. Why do you like Doodlebugs? See my last response. Does it get boring filming subway trains in the LA RR and Metro North? I mean, not really. It basically depends on the location. If it's a different location, I'll probably try to rail fan it. The reason why I railfed in the subway so much is that I had a lot of frequent trips to my cousin's college up in the Bronx, 
So, I mean, once I got a lot of rail fighting footage of the one train at 242nd Street, that was pretty much it. I didn't really get any other subway footage afterwards, and any rare catches were just photos. With the one exception of a new technology train passing by out of nowhere during one of my visits. But basically, I don't mind rail fighting all of these railroads since they are my home railroads after all. Basically, I don't say, gee, it sure gets boring rail fanning the same town over and over again. Unlike some Long Island rail fanners, instead of just rail fanning the same town with a bunch of M7s or DE30s, I just get footage at one location and call it a day. I mean, I may get a few other catches at Mattituck or the Greenport branch, but for that I try to see if I can get different angles. If you were able to rebuild and operate an engine, what will it be and where would you run it? Extinct engine? I think we all know the answer, but I'll just say it now. Pennsylvania Doodlebug 4663 in its streamlined form. And I would probably run it somewhere... Well, first of all, probably a revenue service. Bring it back to somewhere within Michigan or Indiana where it ran most often. And if it has to be a heritage railroad... I'm not really sure where per se, but probably around that same region. So this way, it's within its home state. Actually, a better answer for that would be the same museum that has Pierre Marquette 1225, since both of them went to Grand Rapids. Hey, Stinky! If you could restore a doodlebug, what will it be and where would you run it? Pennsylvania 4663 near Grand Rapids, Michigan. Do you go to Florida? I've been there plenty of times before to visit Disney World, and I'm planning on visiting there at least one more time in the relative future. Have you ever thought about coming to Virginia and see Norfolk and Western 611? No need, because I already have! Or at least in Strasburg, which is probably where it'll remain until further notice. I haven't really been to Virginia per se, and it's not on the list of places to visit at the moment, but it's definitely rich in railroading history, so I may consider it sometime in the future. Again, I'm not sure when this will be, but it seems like a nice place to visit. T1 or S1. I know the S1 isn't really reliable, but I would still have to go for the S1 since it was kind of like a prototype for the T1. That and it had a lot more streamlining. What is one PRR engine you would want back in service? 4663 existing would probably be the last remaining H10, which unfortunately since this is unscripted I don't remember the number at this time, but here it is on the screen. What's a steam locomotive that should have been restored? Extinct would definitely be in New York Central Hudson. I think we all want that engine back. Existing, again, I'm going to have to go with the Penn C H10 because a lot of them were also on the Long Island Railroad and would be perfect along with the Long Island G5. Your opinion on the Pan Am, MRL, and KCS acquisition. Basically, the Class 1s are trying to expand their reach, which I can kind of see the case for Montana Rail Link since most of Montana Rail Link's traffic was just BNSF through runs anyways. But for Pan Am and KCS, I would say just let them be. I mean, good for them for expanding their territory, but I'm not too much of a fan of Class 1s expanding more than already now, since that's expanding their reach into more areas, that's more territory that they have to cover, and probably more funding that has to go for each one. Which means they'll probably spend less time on other divisions, so... Are you excited about Brightline expansion to Orlando? Any favorite coal hauling railroad? Probably Norfolk and Western or the Virginian. Favorite model trains and scale? I'm not sure of any model train per se that's my favorite, but definitely O scale since that makes up most of my collection. I'm first, lol. I regret to inform you that you are not in fact first. Based on sorting by newest, that honor would go to the first question of Do you know the way? Why do you like streamlined doodlebugs? One, I like Doodlebugs because they connect smaller towns to a larger mainline, so this way every town has some sort of connection to a railroad. Two, the reason why I like Streamline Doodlebugs in particular is because it goes to show that the railroad who owns them, such as the Pensy, went out of their way to give the smallest branch line the most exquisite and high-class service, basically giving them the streamlined or red carpet treatment that you would only see on mainline passenger trains for a relatively small branch line. Is there an unsuccessful locomotive class you like? If so, why? That would be the EMD, DE, and DM30AC. 
probably because I see them the most often because they're on my home railroad. Although there is a good chance that if some railroads in the Midwest keep up their EMD only tradition, they could see extended service on that railroad. Again, none of this is confirmed, but it's something that I would like to see happen because I don't want to see these engines get scrapped, and is a possibility depending on certain traditions of this Midwestern Railroad. What's your opinion on these newfangled hydrogen and battery powered engines? I mean, they're pretty good. I can see why a lot of railroads are implementing them because it doesn't require the costly infrastructure that goes along with full scale electrification. But some people also don't necessarily agree with them because of the methods to produce the lithium ion batteries and the hydrogen powered is just as bad if not worse than carbon emissions from fossil fuels. I mean, it's good for short runs and if you want to electrify, just make sure that the power source for the electricity is using renewables as well. Not only that, but Worldwide Railfan also made a very good video explaining these two types of alternate fuels in particular, so I highly recommend watching that video. Favorite video games? This was mentioned in the last Q&A, so I'll try and keep it brief, but I was mostly a Mario fan, so a lot of those games that I have would include any of the Mario Party series, Mario Kart, Super Mario Bros as well as some of the Cars video games on the PC and the Wii. If a steam locomotive was to receive a boiler from another locomotive, would the tractive effort be increased or the same as the donor engine? Let me just... Since tractive effort has to do with the wheels more than the boiler, I'm not really sure if tractive effort would be affected all that much, so it would be more or less the same. What is your favorite video of mine? I'm not really sure since I didn't see all of your videos yet, so I can't really make a decision at this time. Do you like Hamilton? I saw it once about a little over a year ago, but it was definitely a good musical and I hope to see it again, at least on Disney+. Plus. Favorite CNO you know design? Probably one of the Alleghenies. Favorite meal? Breakfast would be an egg everything sandwich with bacon and cheese. Lunch would probably be grilled cheese with pepperoni, and dinner would probably be steak with um, a side of mashed potatoes. Now granted, these aren't the healthiest options, but I'm just saying these are some of the most flavorful that I've had. Green Bream. If the CNJ and the NH would merge, what would it be called and how would you think its livery would be? Now I would assume this would probably be sometime in the 60s or the 70s, so it would have a relatively simple livery, and they both had orange, so it would probably be some sort of black, white, blue stripes going around with an orange background overall. And it would probably be called the New Haven and Jersey Central. I'm thinking about this on the fly because, again, this is unscripted, and I didn't really review many of these questions until now, so... Are you for or against the CPKC merger? I mean, good for Canadian Pacific if they want to reach into Mexico and expand their freight range, but you're kind of losing the history of Kansas City Southern since that's been around for over a hundred years. And it'll definitely be sad to see Kansas City Southern go. And again, I'm not really a fan of larger class ones expanding their reach more than they are now since it's more territory that they have to cover, it's more reasons they have to consider, and I'm basically a fan of not biting off more than you can chew, to say the least. Do you watch anime? If so, what are your top favorites? I don't watch anime per se, but my favorite of the sort would be JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. What is your opinion on Thomas the Tank Engine? And what about Tubbs? I mean, it was good, especially for the classic series. Then it kind of had a bit of a downfall with the hit era, came back up again with Brenner, and... Basically, I stopped following the series after um, Big World, Big Adventures, and from what I can tell, it just got worse from there. I also find it interesting that Tugs had a slightly older target audience, to say the least. And it's nice to see that this little spin-off series of Thomas has a good fan base as well. It's just a shame that they didn't have more episodes. I'm a rail fan from Virginia that's interested in filming NYC and Long Island stuff. Are there spots you would recommend, and what advice would you give me? 
basically the same standards for any rail fending in general. Just try to keep out of the way on certain platforms and there are definitely a lot of good nature shots if you go out east, especially for the diesel branches. I may be a little bit biased because this is where I rail fan the most often, but yeah, there are definitely some spots along the Montauk branch and the Greenport branch if you want scenery, but frequencies there aren't as high. Well, maybe they might be considering that Virginia doesn't get too much pasture service either, so. But anyways, um, Mineola is also a great place for a lot of action, as well as Floral Park. Those two are the big hotspots for rail fighting in general. If you go to the right platform or the right angle, at this point I would probably recommend Floral Park since Mineola is kind of under construction with the third track being implemented. So if you want action, go to Floral Park. If you want scenery, go to the Greenport branch, preferably Mattituck or anywhere further east. Should NS allow mainline steam again? Yes! Favorite steam locomotives? Already answered in the intro video, but again, New York Central Hudson. Thoughts on RRHMA acquiring UP 5511, 6936, and 3985? Yes! Should Great Northern 2584 be restored to operation? Yes! New build NYC Hudson, yay or nay? No! What sparked your intuits in the PRR? Basically, the Long Island Railroad, which is my home railroad, was a subsidiary of the Pennsylvania Railroad up until the 60s. And the Pennsylvania Railroad is also known for being one of the greatest railroads in American railroading, despite what other fans may think, but such examples include Pennsylvania Station, the Broadway Limited, the GG1, the K4s, and of course, the Streamline Doodlebug. Favorite slash least favorite heritage unit from each class one. When I say least favorite for heritage units, it's not a matter of me not liking them, it's just a matter of not finding anything too interesting about them. So, favorite for Amtrak would be 108. Least favorite would be 145. Canadian National, my favorite would be 3115. Least favorite would be 8898. Favorite for Canadian Pacific would be 3084. I don't really have a least favorite for CP since they're all the same for the ACUs. Favorite Metro one would be 211. Least favorite would be 425. Favorite for NJ Transit would be 4636, least favorite would be 4519. Favorite Norfolk Southern would go to 8102, least favorite would be 8100. And favorite Union Pacific would go to 1995, least favorite would go to 1983. I'm sorry if I triggered any rail fans for that list. Thoughts on the T1 Steam Trust? It's great to see that we'll be getting the T1 back, but I can go either way with their speed record. I mean, it would be great to see if they would be able to beat Mallard's record, albeit 80 or at that point maybe 90 years later. And if they are able to do this, it would make Air National headlines. But I can go either way on it, honestly. PC SPSF. Which one stays? I would have to say PC because they actually made it as a railroad. And they actually had passenger service to regions that Amtrak still doesn't serve, such as Buffalo to Pittsburgh. Where was that on the Connexus map? Favorite slash least favorite video you made past the present. Favorite again within the year that would have to be fixing your branch line. For Remarkable Engines in general, that would just be ELS 600 since that's a very good one that I can take off off the top of my head. But least favorite video in the past for narrated series absolutely goes to Southern Pacific number one. I'm sorry about that, but that video was just terrible. The narration was rushed. I tried to do the whole thing in two takes. Mispronunciations everywhere. Odd placing. Blurry photos. It was just terrible, to say the least. And somehow it got a little bit of popularity when someone on a Facebook group posted a video to it, but I'm sorry to anyone who might have cringed after seeing that video. And I'm not really sure if a remake would do it justice. But anyways, favorite catch? Probably New York Atlantic at Yampank dropping off a lumber car at Blue Lynx. Favorite diesel with a Triclops cab? The SD40-2F. Electronic bells or mechanical bells? Mechanical bells. Favorite streamlined doodlebug? Pennsylvania 4663. That's a fender bender. Meme. 
NKP or Pierre Marquette Burke. Considering that they're both the same model, I would go for NKP. If you had to delete one of your videos, which one would it be? Now, I wouldn't go as far as to delete any of my videos. I mean, yes, I might have uploaded stuff that was cringeworthy in the past, but nothing that I would want to delete per se. Favorite line of post-war logo. Tie between the Penzi S2 and the 040 Switcher. There are probably official names for these two models, but I don't know them offhand. Favorite Amtrak route of each type and region. Since there are different regions, I'm just going to split them up in the East, Midwest, and West for convenience, I suppose. The East Coast, favorite inner city route would be Northeast Regional, favorite long distance route would be the Lakeshore Limited. Midwest, favorite inner city route would be the Lincoln Service, long distance would be the California Zephyr. And the West Coast, favorite inner city would be Pacific Surfliner, and long distance would be the Coast Starlight. Least favorite commuter rail system of all time. Ebart. Why couldn't it just be a simple yellow line extension? Especially for one that's only 10 miles long and 3 stops long. I mean, they were able to extend their other BART subway systems all the way to San Jose, or at least they're planning to, so why does this one have to be inconsistent and randomly switch to a diesel multiple unit? I mean, it's an interesting operation, but it's a lot of infrastructure that's built just for a DMU, instead of just, you know, extending the subway to Antioch. Shinkansen Zero, TGV Sudest, Ice One HST, Acela Gen 1, or Via Siemens Set. From that very diverse range of power, I would have to go with the Acela Gen 1 since I see it the most often. Ideas for Pittsburgh to San Diego, Miami to Dallas, and San Fran to Seattle trains. All of these are very unlikely commuter routes given their length and somewhat odd routing, but Pittsburgh to San Diego, that would be Pensy trackage from Pittsburgh to Columbus to St. Louis, Missouri Pacific trackage from St. Louis to Little Rock to Dallas to El Paso, and then Southern Pacific trackage from El Paso to Los Angeles, and then Santa Fe trackage to San Diego. Miami to Dallas would be Seaboard Airline from Miami to Jacksonville, Atlantic Coastline from Jacksonville to Montgomery, Atlanta West Point from Montgomery to Meridian, maybe a little bit of Southern Railway, and then the ex-Illinois Central and Missouri Pacific along the Meridian Speedway from Meridian to Dallas. And San Francisco to Seattle is kind of easy, that's just, if you have to start at San Francisco, then back up to ex Pacific to San Jose, and then take the ex Pacific and Northern Pacific all the way up to Seattle. Favorite restaurant? Fast food chain would be Five Guys, and I'm not really sure about restaurants since I've been to a lot of them throughout many of my travels. But there are some pretty good restaurants in downtown Port Jefferson such as Tommy's and the Pie. Do you prefer commuter roads to use multiple units, locomotive haul coaches, or both? Depending on the route, I would say both. Multiple units are great for short distances, if you need a lot of acceleration and the stations are relatively close to each other. While locomotive haul coaches would be better for express services or peak services, that don't stop at every station and don't really rely on acceleration that much. SEPTA is a great example of this because they use multiple units for their local runs and locomotive haul coaches for their peak trains. What's the most unusual working you've ever caught while rail fanning? Now I assume you mean unusual catch, so three that I can think of off the top of my head are a CE move at Port Jefferson, the FRA train also at Port Jefferson with that was the first year that they had two DE-30ACs in between one coach. And technically a photo, a New Haven FL9 behind a CSX local near Meadowlands, New Jersey. What else do you like besides trains? I'm also a fan of the Disney Pixar car series since I also collect 155 scale models of them. I also collect Hess trucks in addition to cars as well as US Mint coins. I also play the piano, xylophone, and other percussion instruments. And I was also a Boy Scout until I aged out recently. If you could resurrect an extinct locomotive class from any country in the world by building a brand new example, what would it be and why? Pennsylvania 4663, I already said the New York Central Hudson for steam locomotives, but to choose an international model? I would probably go for a small British shunter. Probably the Great Eastern G15. 
I would say this because it was the basis of Toby, and we don't really have that many trams in preservation. So the G15 is just one that I can think of off the top of my head, but there are plenty of other British shunters that I'd like to see restored since they're all unique in their own way. There are plenty of locomotive builders for a lot of smaller railroads before the big four, and it would really be nice to see them in preservation. If you were to bring back any fallen flag, which one would you? Definitely to Pennsylvania because not only did they have a lot of main passenger routes between New York and Chicago, but they also had a lot of branch lines. As well as this legend over here. What do you think is the most important railroad merger? As of right now with all the other mergers going on between Pan Am, Montana Rail Link, and KCS, I would absolutely say Kansas City Southern since this will make Canadian Pacific the first railroad in history to go in Canada, the US, and Mexico. And it would also make it one of the largest railroads in North America, and it would reduce the number of class ones from 7 to 6. Again, I'm not really that much of a fan of it per se, since, again, I don't want railroads being too large to the point where they have too many regions to focus on and quality goes down in order to compensate for others. But the ongoing merger between CP and KCS is definitely the most important, in recent years at least. Speaking of which, what is your view on the CP-CM battle for KCS when it was happening? I can kinda see why the SCP gave it to Canadian Pacific. Especially since CN already acquired the Illinois Central, acquiring the KCS as well would give Canadian National a bit of a monopoly in some states, especially Louisiana. Then again, at least giving KCS a CP is at least a little bit more competitive, because now it only increases the rivalry between the two Canadian Class 1s. Class 59 or Class 66? I would say the Class 66 since it's more numerous and it's a slightly modified version of the Class 59. Do you think the LARR and Metro North should merge? No. Well, I mean, they kinda are somewhat. I mean, they're both subsidiaries of the MTA, but I would just prefer something that keeps the LAWR's identity, so this way it doesn't lose the Long Island Railroad name to something like, oh, I don't know, Metro New York? I don't really know. What I'm trying to say is that I would really support keeping the Long Island Railroad tradition going since 1834. Should Amtrak add another international route? Yes, yes, they should. The more service they have, the better. Although I would preferably give it to a private company like Brightline, but I'll go on about that later. But anyways, for international routes, one that I would think of in particular is some sort of route that goes from upstate New York all the way up to Ottawa, since that connection is still relatively intact along the CSX Messina line. Should NJT retire to Jeeps? No. Keep on rebuilding because EMD Jeeps will never let you down. It's all about that long-lasting EMD service quality. Not only that, but if you retire the Jeeps, then that's fewer locomotives available in case there's an engine shortage. So the more locomotives you have available, the more trains you can run. Will you livestream? Probably not, unless if it's something extremely rare happening in front of me, because I'm worried about some sort of livestream fail going on, and then I would either have to delete the video, or cut out very obvious portions. Also, OMG, I asked the 4th and 5th question! I never do this! I think I many be sus for asking two more questions than I usually do! Stream of emojis. Don't worry, you're all good. The limit is 5 anyways, so if people ask more than their usual amount, that's alright. Which locomotive is your hate or dislike? What? What date of year you will release video about extinct steam locomotives? I already did! It's called April Fools! Thoughts about GEP30CH and INNM1284? The P30CH was a little less than reliable, but... It has a lot of fans because it's an extinct diesel locomotive engine, but... I didn't include it in the top 10 extinct diesels list because it's based off the U30. And the INNM1 is a pretty good locomotive. Which PR are steam electric diesel locomotives your favorite or hate? I don't really have any Pensy engines I don't necessarily like. So for favorite, all three would be 4663. Pensy steam would probably be one of the streamlined K4s. Electric would have to go to... I mean the GG1s are pretty good, but I would also tie it with the streamlined P5 since they were used for local services. 
and Diesel, not counting 4663 since that's a diesel rail car, would probably be the E7s. Favorite memes. That would be a lot of them. I've been keeping track of a lot of memes for the past few years, but... One that I could think of off the top of my head would probably be the intro for Better Call Saul, the glasses emoji meme, and the slander memes in general. Favorite train of 2022. My favorite train of the year in that case would probably be the R142 caught at 242nd Street. And which is the best narrow gauge railroad? Probably the former Rio Grande narrow gauge, preferably the Durango and Silverton since it has a little bit more diverse power and its own song, and all of its railroad intact, whereas the Cumbersome and Toltec has most of the line abandoned until Silverton. What are your thoughts on UP3985 and 5511 both being restored to operation by the RRHMA? Yes! Does UP still plan to install PTC on the 844? I think they do, and I will probably see why they would, since they already installed PTC on 4014. And it wouldn't surprise me if other steam locomotives would have PTC installed on them as well, since it would better to have a steam locomotive pull excursions with PTC did not run at all due to not meeting this federal regulation. When PRR 1361's restoration to operation is complete, do you think it'll doublehead with the soon to be constructed 5550? I mean, I don't see why not. That would be a pretty interesting lash up. Although it wouldn't be historically accurate, it would still be nice to see two Pensy Seam locomotives running on a doubleheader. Although the logistics for this would be a little bit complicated since you have a K4 and an engine twice the size running in front or behind it, so the logistics for that would be pretty interesting, but yeah, it would definitely get the attention of a lot of foamers. What is your top 5 favorite retired steam excursion stars on the mainline as of 2022? The same as my last video, which again, I'm doing this unscripted, so I'll just replay the clip. Uh, From least to most favorite will be Union Pacific 3985, NNW1218, North Pacific 328, Cotton Belt 819, and Canadian Pacific 2317. Don't ask why, I skimmed through a bunch of these videos and chose any five which stood out. Do you think that NNW611 will be equipped with PTC and also be converted to burn oil instead of coal? Again, it wouldn't surprise me if this would happen since 1. You have the federal regulation requiring all engines to install PTC, and then you have to move to use cleaner forms of energy, such as oil, instead of coal. So something like that could easily happen for 611 and other steam excursion stars. Maybe the engines like NKP765 or Pier Marquette 1225. It's all about being up to code nowadays. GG1 or AEM7. I would have to go with the AEM7. UP Big Boys or SP Daylights? SP Daylights. Do you like Conroe? Yes, I do. Opinion on the SC4-2. Reliable EMD power that's one of the most numerous engines in the world. Do you know Thunderbolt 1000 Siren Productions? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, he submitted a question for the last Q&A, and he was even a guest speaker on the first annual Golden Doodlebug Awards. Ford, Chevy, or Dodge Trucks? I would have to say Chevy because they're technically EMD. They were both owned by General Motors at the time, so I guess in terms of automobiles, it would have to be Chevy. Although a lot of railroads do seem to use Ford pickups. H-O scale or O scale? O scale because I have more of it and I review Lionel catalogs more frequently. Have you seen any of SpyX family? No, I have not. Which fallen flag railroad do you prefer? Norfolk and Western or the Rock Island? I would say the Rock Island for more diverse power. What's your thoughts on Saluda Grade, aka the steepest mainline railroad grade in the United States? I'm sad to see that it's inactive, and I'm hoping that if not Norfolk Star, then maybe one of the short lines could reactivate it. What's your opinion on Go Transit's electrification project? Pretty nice. Again, it's a bit of a shame that they're not electrifying all the lines at this point, but again, it's a sign of the times to show that most rail lines are using cleaner forms of energy, whether it be battery, hydrogen, or in this case, overhead wires. Do you have a favorite discontinued Amtrak long distance route? If so, which one do you want to bring back? Although there are many discontinued routes throughout Amtrak's system, probably more than there are running, I would have to bring back the National Limited since it was the only direct New York to St. Louis service, 
which was a pretty popular corridor along the Pennsy back in the day. What are your favorite railroads in the Carolinas? Foam flag would be Seaboard Airline, Atlantic Coastline, and Norfolk Southern. Present day would be Aberdeen, Carolina, and Western, Amtrak, and CSX. What railroad would be Railfane in South Carolina? I guess if you're asked to Railfane a certain railroad in South Carolina, it would probably be CSX, and depending on the scheduling, probably RJ Corman. I say this because I visited Myrtle Beach over a year ago to visit some family members, and the closest railroad I was nearby was RJ Corman, but I wasn't able to railfan it, and I don't really know their schedule per se. What railroad would you railfan in North Carolina? Probably Amtrak and Norfolk Southern since they have a lot of trackage there. And it's on the list of places to visit relatively soon, so expect footage in North Carolina sometime soon. And what is your favorite switching locomotive? I would probably give it to the MP15AC since they also consist of a lot of work moves and equipment moves in Long Island. Which T1 locomotive do you prefer more? 2102 since it's in operating service and pulled a few freight cars for test runs, so that was kind of cool. What is your least favorite railroad? I'm not really sure if I have a least favorite railroad per se, but Penn Central was one of the largest railroad failures in Class 1 history, so I guess Penn Central. Why do you like the Pennsylvania Railroad? Because the Long Island Railroad was a Pennsylvania subsidiary for a substantial amount of their history. And again, Streamline Doodlebug. What is your favorite Danish locomotive? The Class F 060. There's also something a bit unique about Danish steam engines in which their funnels have a red, white, and red band around them. So that's a nice little detail. What'll it be, fellas? Mustard or ketchup? The proposed livery of CPKC. Opinion on Union Pacific GTEL locomotives. Also, the experimental 53 and 80 are included. They're pretty good engines. It's nice to see that Union Pacific incorporated natural gas into some of these turbines and were some of the strongest engines in the world. That is before the ACS-64, as told by the first episode of Train Facts. Should we build a new 4663? Yes! Opinion on BC Rail. It's a nice little Canadian railroad in British Columbia, and its heritage unit for CN is definitely the best in terms of the paint scheme. It's also important to note that BC Rail continued passenger service up until 2002 with Bud RDCs, thus making them one of the last passenger operations in Canada to not be incorporated in Via Rail. Now as to why Via Rail didn't restart passenger service on this line is beyond me, but come on Via Rail, please. Even if it's just something like the Jasper to Gasp train, where it's just a baggage car, a coach, or a dome car, even a short contest like that, that would be perfectly fine for a Vancouver to Prince George service on the former BC Rail. Model train collection video? My collection is kind of dispersed throughout my basement, so it would take a while to bring everything and unbox every train for a collection vid, but the closest thing you'll see to that is the Reed Family Train Project. Things you want to model. I don't really make any custom models per se, but if I had to kitbash something, it would probably be 4663, as well as Alaska 216, or maybe in some sort of obscure steam locomotive of a class one. I'm not really sure which one at the moment, but yeah, these are just general projects I would like to model. Favorite TV shows of any kind? I just finished watching Loki, so that was pretty good. Favorite era of cars? 50s, 60s, 70s, or 80s? I would say the 50s because you still had a little bit of that Art Deco incorporated. You had a lot of different vibrant colors. They were often associated with the economic boom of the 50s. And they were just known to be made better to say the least. Especially for certain manufacturers. Are you a pigtail? Now before I answer this, let me give you a proper response to your previous question about Rodney in the last Q&A. In terms of seeing Rodney in particular, the reason why I don't comment on a major New York Central fan's channel is that one, the commenters will probably notice and then mock me in the comments, or two, Rodney himself will notice and then make a video about my name for liking the Pensy and call me a pigtail. And then all the Rodney stands will mock me in the comments. But surprisingly, I do not hate on the Central just because I like the Pensy. I do respect the New York Central for their attempts of streamlining an RDC and setting a land speed record, as well as their prestigious water level route, which is still used by CSX and Norfolk Southern to this day. 
at least C sub Cleveland for the latter. So I like pretty much all class 1s or fallen flags equally, and I'm not going to bash one class 1 because I like another. Tiny Welsh trains? They're pretty good. Although a lot of people are usually fans of them because of the Scarlowy Railway. Should NW 2050 be restored? Yes! Thoughts on PRR 5550? It's good to see that we'll be getting a T1 back, and I'm neutral for the speed record, although it would be cool if it could achieve that record. Should other PRR duplexes be rebuilt like the Q2? Some people argue that the Q2 should have been new built instead of the T1. And I can see where they're coming from because the Q2 is more reliable when compared to the 5550. Both of them were duplexes. And I think some of them try to appreciate the fancy freight steamers rather than pasture steamers, which makes sense. So T1 Trust, if you're listening, try and see if you can build a Q2 after the T1. And maybe in New York Central Hudson while you're at it. DMIR 227 or Sun Pacific 4292. Assuming you mean 4294, I would go with 4294. CNO 1604 or NW 1218? I would say NW 1218. What is your opinion on Southern Pacific 4449? It's great to see that we have a daylight engine in preservation, and even though it's not the most streamlined engine in American history, it's great to see that it became an excursion star and toured almost all across the US for decades. What's your least favorite American railroad? Better not be SP. Don't worry, it isn't. I would probably stay Penn Central because of its huge financial turmoil and just some reliability for freight transport at the time. What's your opinion on the Alco PA slash PBs? A little bit of an underrated diesel from Alco. I'm not sure if they are the most reliable, but they never really stood a chance when compared to other diesels at the time, especially the EMDE units. But it's nice to see that we at least have a few in preservation and that some of them are undergoing restoration. What's your favorite model that you own? I have an Amtrak GG1 and O gauge, so that's up there. But again, I have a relatively large collection, so I'm not really sure offhand. But O gauge would definitely be one of the Amtrak GG1s from Lionel. An LAWR GP38 2, and a custom LAWR DE38 C that I got at the swap meet based off of an F59. If you could travel back and see one event in railroading history or another, what would it be? A particular event would be the 1939 World's Fair due to the expansive variety of power around the world. And other than that, I would just say the early 1950s for rail fanning, since it was the transition era from steam to diesel. Ever since I pointed out that the Rio Grande was the technical owner of the Union Pacific, have you found out of any more unexpected ownerships of Class 1 Railroads by defunct fallen flag companies? I did find a few more based on this video of train facts, but I think the Norfolk and Western is actually a subsidiary of the Southern, and that makes up the present day Norfolk Southern. So technically Norfolk Southern is really the Southern Railway, and the Norfolk Western is just a subsidiary, I suppose. I could be wrong on this though. Favorite class of American 060 steam switchers? I would say some of the Southern Pacific shop switchers. Opinion on UP4466? It's pretty good. It's nice to see that we have some shunters in preservation as well. You know what they say, never overlook a little engine. You have to care about some of the small ascensions in preservation in addition to some of the most famous ones. What's your favorite Australian train? Now I consider Australia to be a magical land where American and British locomotive designs can work together. So with that said, for Steam it would probably be the 520 class for looking like a Penn CT1, and Diesel would be the B class for being a double-ended E unit. What's a railway line you believe should be closed? Don't close any railway lines, I would suggest shutting down the interstate highway systems that ran over most of the railway lines. Or at the very least, placing railway medians in between them. Overhead or third rail. I would say overhead since it seems to be more reliable than the third rail and doesn't get covered by snow as easily. Do you like Thomas the Tank Engine? Let's admit it, it's what got all of us in the rail fanning, including myself. But yes, I have been a little bit of a fan. I've been following up for it somewhat recently and then kind of left the community, albeit I was just a bystander and didn't really have any account or interact with anyone, but I just kind of observed it until Big World Big Adventure started and the rest of the series became cringe after that, so... 
If you answered yes, to which I did, how would you answer the following? You have been kidnapped. You are trapped in a room. The person keeping you hostage is forcing you to watch either the Sharon Miller era, the PWBA era, or all engines go. I would rather leave is not an option, and trying to escape isn't an option either. You can only watch one of the three worst Thomas eras, and you have no other options. Which one do you choose? Sharon Miller era. Definitely the Sharon Miller era. Because I had the upper hand. I watched every single episode. Up until Big World Big Adventures, because the rest of the show became cringe afterwards. But the point is, if I choose Sharon Miller, I know what's going to happen. And I've seen enough review videos by the Unlucky Tug to know which episode to look out for. And even still, the Sharon Miller era is, I'm sorry to say this, the most realistic out of the three. Yes, I know that is a very controversial thing to call the Sharon Miller era realistic, but there are parts in there that I can sit back and jokingly point out at certain episodes and I can have fun watching or ranting about the Sharon Miller eras. I haven't seen the latter two, so watching those two would just make me rather depressed and that would not go down well for me. So I would definitely choose the Shara Miller era to go through. That one I can make it out of. The other two, not so much. You really seem to have a thing for streamlined doodlebugs, don't you? Well, it's a matter of top end service to the smallest of branch lines. So again, that's connecting every little town to a greater railroad with style. Favorite via rail paint schemes? I would say the classic blue and yellow, although I'm not sure the official name of them. And the present blue and silver scheme is pretty good too. Favorite Siemens Charger paint schemes? The original paint scheme for Coaster. Look at all these beautiful waves that they had in delivery. And then they gave us just blue and turquoise. Most overrated paint schemes in your opinion? Now I don't really consider a paint schemes overrated to say the least. Sometimes simple is relatively good. But if I had to choose one that's kind of overrated, I would probably have to go with Amtrak Phase 7. Now I'm not saying it's bad, it looks good, it's definitely an improvement over Phase 5, but I'm just saying it's a bit overrated when compared to Phase 6, which was a transition livery that was only applied to the first few chargers, as well as Amtrak 108. Again, I also said Phase 6 because it was one that I could think of off the top of my head, and I don't want to call Phase 3 overrated because that's iconic for Amtrak in its own right. Opinions on the Allo XO paint scheme and the CRRC bi-level cars. Allo XO, if you go from two different shades of blue to just black and silver, I would probably call that a bit of a downgrade, if you ask me. And the CRRC bi-level cars, I mean, they look okay. It's just unfortunate that they got caught on a high beam during transport. But, um... I just hope their reputation is better than the CRRC cars on MBTA, and that they don't replace any existing Bombardier cars yet, so this way they have more stock available for any route expansions. Favorite cab car besides the C3 bi-levels? I would probably say the Metroliners or the California cars. Opinion on the American healthcare system? Now there's a very good video that a channel named Kraut made about this topic and basically it kind of explains why i also like brightline in the video which shows nhs scotland as a good example of a healthcare system since it basically divides the region into multiple areas instead of having one big company oversee everything and not give enough adequate funding for each region and he also said at the end of the video that healthcare should be left up to the states instead of the federal government so this way it could better meet the needs of the people of each state I feel the same thing should be done for passenger rail in the US, so this way, instead of having one big company such as Amtrak overlook all rail operations and only get enough funding to run one train a day in areas that use C12, Amtrak should be split up into multiple different regions, preferably at least 20 since Amtrak was made up of 22 class 1s, so this way each railroad can focus on improving service in one specific region instead of having to worry about the whole nation at once. Likewise, these can be either privately operated like Brightline, or state-run like the Cascades or Surfline. Now, I'm kind of iffy on the state-run option since that's kind of a case-by-case -case basis. 
I've noticed that private companies seem to work better in states that don't necessarily support state-funded service. So you have some states like Illinois who are willing to propose and operate new commuter rail services or increase frequencies on lines like the Lincoln service. And then you have other states that reduce the frequencies of trains such as the Missouri River Runner from twice a day to once a day. And some states like Minnesota that outright block or delay funding for other projects like Northern Lights Express. However, Brightline also seems to work in Florida since the state isn't necessarily paying for it. The private sector is covering the cost for that railroad, and that's especially the case since a previous Florida governor blocked an attempt for state funded passenger rail along the same route since it would require taxpayer dollars. So I would say states that are supportive of passenger rail, I would suggest a state operated service. And for those that aren't necessarily fond of passenger rail, leave it to the private sector. What's your answer to the trolley problem? Maneuver the switch in a certain way so that the trolley stalls on the two tracks and isn't able to move forward. Doodlebugs or DRCs. I have a go with the doodlebugs, even though DRCs are more common nowadays. 844 or 4449. 844. Gaming. I can't really do a gaming channel for a train simulator because my screen recorder has way too low FPS. And even when I did have TSW, the FPS was very low. So that would just be a bad combo for watch quality. What's the most hated train? The LBSCR E2. Do you think BNSF should have a Steam program? Yes! I'm spying on you. Well, I guess that explains the suspicious van outside of my house. Why do you like trains? Because they're an efficient form of transportation and they're interesting to learn about in terms of history and mechanics. Is Remarkable Engine so special? Yes, because it's the first official narrated series on the channel. Invalid question number one. Invalid question number two. Thoughts on the GE E60. They were unreliable, but they were pretty large at the time and they were actually more powerful than the ACS-64. I stole one of every current locomotive in the world, and all except one will be scrapped. Which do you pick? I would save Pen C-1361. Thoughts on the Turboliners, RTG and RTL. They're great concepts, especially to see that they had multiple units as early in the 70s and 80s, and it's a type of railcar that we should implement in the US. And it's definitely a shame that the RTLs, even though they were refurbished, were just stored for most of their lives, and now they're just stored again with an unknown fate. But I would definitely suggest having more rail cars like the RTG and RTL for inner city services, so this way it could free up more coaches and locomotives. Do you think the SFSP merger could have happened? I mean, it had a lot of support back in the day, although there were some areas where it could have been anti-competitive, but they were two relatively different regions, so I definitely see it happening, especially if there was so much hype for it back in the 80s. What about California High Speed Rail or Brightline West? Brightline West probably has a better chance of being done first because again, private companies having fewer government related hurdles, and California High Speed Rail has just been delayed again and again and again. So I'm hopeful that they eventually finish it, especially that they already have construction. But I just hope that its construction process is somehow streamlined or somehow improves than what we have now. Is my sixth question good? It is invalid. Do you think that Amtrak P32s, P42s, all the Cell Express, and fleet cars will be preserved in the future? I hope so. I mean, we already have a few Amfleets preserved on the tourist railroad, and it's very likely that at least one museum will get in the cell. I'd probably say the Rural Museum Pennsylvania since it's the closest to Northeast Corridor trackage, and also has a lot of other electrics that ran on the same line. P32s and P42s will probably be sold off to other commuter railroads before going to local museums, and maybe one railroad's maintenance service since they have been seen on Amtrak maintenance trains before. Do you think it's possible for the US rail system to be nationalized and electrified within a reasonable time? I mean, it is possible, technically, but then you would either have to, one, raise taxes by 200% at least to pay for it all, or two, redirect funding from other groups such as the highway system. Now all of this can be possible, but I'm not really sure if that would be received too well by many politicians. What Fallen Flag Road do you think had a great and diverse amount of engines, but ended up scrapping most of them? 
The Rock Island is definitely one that comes to mind because they had a lot of older locomotives that they kept up until the 70s or 80s. Some of them made it the short line road, some of them were just scrapped. Favorite and least favorite railroad merger. Favorite would be Seaboard Coastline, least favorite would be Penn Central. Camcorders or DSLRs for Ralph and Videography. I would say camcorders because I have a Nikon DSLR and when I tried to do video footage on it, it stopped the video when I zoomed out too far. What is the biggest foamer moment you ever had? That would probably be catching 404 when it still had its sticker, which is video footage which is uploaded to the channel. Thoughts on Metro? They were a great commuter rail system who should expand a few more lines and it's great to see that they have relatively diverse power even if it means acquiring former freight locomotives because they're EMD. Favorite CSX scheme? YN2. Do you play Minecraft? No, I do not. Should Microsoft try again with MSDS2? I don't see why not, it sounds like a great idea. Would you go to Chicago to watch trains in the future? I've been there twice and I'm planning to go there again. The first time was a dedicated trip in 2015, where I stayed there for a few days and just checked out the city of Chicago. And the second time was a quick pit stop between the Cardinal and California Zephyr during my trip to California in 2017. But don't worry, Chicago is in the list of places I would like to visit again, and hopefully I'll do a little bit more rail fanning there. Does CNR 5270 have a chance of being on remarkable engines anytime soon? I'm not sure at the moment, but I'll try and find some more info on it. Does New Brunswick need more preserved locomotives since there's only four locomotives preserved? I mean, I don't see why not. Since the city of Moncton had to be shamed into repainting 5270, since the paint was fading and many parts were still missing on the locomotive, should 5270 be bought and restored to operational condition or just be cosmetically restored? Either or would be nice. I mean, if it were to be given some sort of contract for mainline service, preferably with a rare museum or a class one, then I would say restore to operational condition. But if it's just going to be sitting on a park, or if there aren't too many plans, or if the company who purchased it already has a steam locomotive, I would say a cosmetic restoration would do. Best locomotive. Pennsylvania 4663. Opinions on Milwaukee Road. A very good fallen flag in the Midwest, and impressive that they had electrification in Montana. PC or Conrail. Conrail. What do you think of a news station owning a rail car for news coverage? It would be nice, it would be an interesting way to transport crews and other materials, especially if they're doing a story that has to do with a rail per se. What improvements would the BMU M7 spring on diesel only branches on the LAR if they're ever finished? Please, Long Island Railroad, finish the M7 battery conversion program. Not only would it save millions of dollars in electrification, but it would also allow for direct Port Jefferson to Penn Station. Montauk to Penn Station, and even Greenport to Penn Station service, since they would easily transfer from the third rail to battery power. Opinion on Condot's purchase of the M8 for SLE possibly messing up the schedule on the Northeast Corridor around New London. Just electrify that third track that's owned by the New England Central. I know it's owned by another railroad, but try and see if you could fix the track and maybe the platform so this way you can add in the catenary so this way you could clear up the Northeast Corridor. It's bad enough that the NEC is only two tracks instead of four in that region, and having a commuter rail run both ways and take up traffic on those two tracks wouldn't really help. If the LAR were to cut their contract with New York Atlantic and take their fleet of MP15s and surviving GP38-2s back, what would happen to NYA's fleet? What would be the most logical locomotive that could be purchased for running on the island? I would easily see a buyback of the four MP15s and GP38s, going into maintenance service. I think there were a few problems of MP15 shortages. I'm not really sure how frequent it is, but I heard it rarely happens. So any more working locomotives on the roster would be great for maintenance service. Will Cars on the Road be a good show or another Dizzy Plus fail? Considering how large of a fan base the car series has, even if the show itself is just okay or a little bit cartoony, it's still going to have a huge following. And I wish it the best of luck. Why is Port Jeff never rail fan that slash so disliked? I guess because everyone just goes to Stony Brook and people just like to uh, talk down upon Port Jefferson for some reason, even though it has six tracks, well technically four, and that there probably aren't that many rail fans out of Port Jefferson in particular. 
Now, I don't see why people don't rail fan at Port Jefferson. Again, it's a great station to rail fan at. It has a nice curve, a good overpass, a great yard, six tracks. And even if the power isn't as often there, whenever something rare comes by, it's much more appreciated by the rail fans along the Port Jeff branch rather than people along the main line who just catch it every day. Don't worry, Foamers. Question six isn't real. It can't hurt you. Question six. E. Oh, looks like I have an impersonator. Surprisingly, this isn't the first impersonator of the sort on the channel. If you are watching this, please just don't impersonate my channel. Or if you do, just don't comment here as often or do anything that would make me look bad. Thanks. Anyways, who do you talk to the most on Discord? The Alan Fisher Discord server. Igor Stravinsky me. Electric powered NYC tank engine. That's referring to a creation that one of the mods on my Discord server showcased. So that kind of shows that whoever you are, you are on the server, which is alright. LAWR bad. Incorrect answer. Brightline good. Correct. And with that, we have reached the end of the fourth QA special, as well as the only QA for the year. Thank you all for your questions. I'm sorry if this took a little bit longer than expected, and if my answers may not sound as well thought out. Again, this is unscripted, because I just don't want to write the whole 15 pages and take up a lot of room on the computer. But with that said, thank you for your great questions, and I'll see you all this time next year for the next annual Q&A special. Thank you again for watching. Credit for all the photos used. Go to their respective photographers. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe for more. Have a good day.